Alrighty, so thank you ladies for coming to our Saturday Sisterhood session. And I want to thank Carmen, our hostess that has this beautiful home and pool. So thank you, Carmen, so yeah. much for that. Yeah. We appreciate our uh, beautiful location. They don't know really where we at, right? Undisclosed location. Undisclosed. Undisclosed, right. Yeah. Undisclosed location. Right. Wherever you feel like you want right. to be. Right. 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 Whatever the mood sets yeah. you up, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And also I want to thank uh, Elliot's Catering, Mary, for yeah. providing right. us with an awesome uh, Saturday brunch. This mm-hmm. has been fantastic. So we still kind of chowing down on our our food and our mimosas and mm-hmm. our coffee. Y'all finished with the coffee? Oh, they yeah. they, they yeah. held it to the... Okay, oh, they, yeah. they got Thank that you. Right now. Yeah. So our Saturday sisterhood session, um, our monthly by monthly little sessions here, uh, we're going to talk about today about womanhood because everybody has maybe a different perspective of what womanhood looks like. It is probably different for all of us as we grow, as we change. I'm not sure the ages of everybody, and I'm not going to ask on camera Mm. (laughs) uh, what the ages are, but I'm sure that we're pretty close in proximity. So I know womanhood looks a little different for all of us. Some of our younger ladies that were um, going to be here, they couldn't, so they would have been able to give us Mm -hmm. that in between, Mm -hmm. you know, between like the 20-something, 30-something from Mm -hmm. the 40s or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first question that I really wanted to uh, ask you guys, and and I'll answer too, it was like, what's your biggest regret for your younger self? And have you, so if you have a regret for your younger self, Now that you're more seasoned, have you pursued that regret that you, you know, thought about or you regret? Have you pursued it or or not or why not? I would say my biggest regret for me was that I didn't immediately go to college when I first graduated from high school. Yes, I've since went back and gained uh, my degree. But that was my biggest regret that always haunted me. And I will be very honest to say that I used to avoid certain circles Mm -hmm. of women Mm -hmm. with degrees and things like that because I just felt, I felt that I couldn't uh, relate. I mean, I could relate, but I just felt that they wouldn't see me. So I would actually shy away from women that may have had their uh, masters and PhDs, I would shy away from them because that was my biggest regret. So I avoided a lot of circles when I was younger, although I was a younger mother, um, and I, I would uh, interact with women that probably were probably about 10 years older than me because mm-hmm. I was a younger mother, but I would really shy away from really integrating with them probably in some friendships that I probably could have gained. Mm-hmm. Um, I did shy away because that was my regret. But I did since go back to school. I got my degree. So I felt a little better. So it was about me. It was about feeling better for myself. So that's my regret. That was for my younger self. Uh, And plus, and just to say why I think, not that I couldn't have. I was just because I became a mother at 19. And so then I was pursuing, you know, in the relationship, marriage. So that I wanted to be the best wife that I could be. So I kind of just put my education on the back burner mm-hmm. and just really put, I really, honest to God, anybody know me, put everything into my kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel that they're very successful as young adults now because I, I made sure that I didn't want them to repeat what I did. Mm-hmm. So if I can let you avoid what I did, I'm going to put everything in it. So if anybody wants to share maybe what was one of their biggest, you know, regrets as their younger self. Carla? I wouldn't, I don't know if that's a younger, it is a younger self, but not okay. in my 20s, but in my early 30s. Uh-huh. I mean, I had already got the college degree, but when I got married a little later, mm-hmm. and what happened was I turned in to my husband and turned out from my friends. Like, I, I started cultivating my marital relationship and just forgot all about my girl. Right, okay. I forgot all about that, that dynamic with me. Not that he, you know, motivated it. 
but it was just the fact that I mean I'm finally married. Like yeah. you know, mm. these girls can wait. You know, yeah. I just enjoy this thing right here. And so I think that that was a regret of mine because now I'm like a step behind. You know, I won't say step behind, but like I missed a lot of you know life events with my friends. Mm. You know, missed some weddings, missed some baby births, and you know some of those things. Yeah. You know, trying to stay close to home and. You know, and I, I'm, I married into a blended family because then I had an immediate family. So it was a right. lot of things that, you know, were above what I was doing. But, you know, um, my marriage is better for it. But, you know, now I'm trying to, you know, reach back and try to grab some of those relationships and make a better, um, you know, friendships and, you know, open it up. So let me ask you this. So now that you say that you're trying to kind of cultivate and the wind is going to blow a lot of stuff. So we, you never know where we're at. We really might be in Tahiti. <laughs> um, so let me ask you this. So now that you know that, it's reaching back to your friends. Is that bit, how is that going? Is it okay? Or are some of them like, well, where you been for 15 years? Or, you know, where were you when I needed you? Because you know how we get. We will get, as women... Personal. We kind of get, mm -hmm. we get hurt sometimes mm -hmm. with our friendships, just mm -hmm. like any relationship. Mm -hmm. exactly. And I'll say this, I know I'm digressing a little bit, but with any relationship, I think, especially women with friendships, yes. you know, we get, we get a little, a little hurt a lot. So mm -hmm. did your friends, you know, were they a receptive for you reaching back or someone was like, girl, bye. Well, this is, this is what happened. It, it probably happened. I started reaching back a couple of years ago. Some of them understood because they had just, they did it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they felt it. They felt that, you know, like, girl, I understand. I did the same thing for mom and them, you know, so, you know, because I had to, you know, leave and, you know, do this and do that. But some of them are still stank. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them still don't understand why, you know, why I took, you know, my family and just cut them off, basically, mm -hmm. is what they're saying. I cut them off and I didn't have time for them. Not that I was all that or anything, but I was a part of their life. And so, you know, and of course, I'm so godly sorry that I did that, uh -huh. but it was it was a choice I made at the time, and it is a regret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's, uh, that's kind of important because, and the only reason I say, we can just put this down, and the only reason sometimes I say that, um, the relationships, because sometimes, not to say in that instance, but sometimes in our relationship, I know I need my girlfriends. It's better, no matter if I, what great relationship I have with my husband, sometimes you just want that girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anybody else want to share? I want to piggyback on and then we'll go to um, relationship. I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. You guys did at the same time. Okay. <laughs> no, I want to piggyback on Carlos. Um, when I was married, um, at, in my younger, at my younger stage, I I put a lot into my marriage and putting a lot into that marriage I think I didn't know how to balance being um, uh, just uh, ind independent spirit mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. felt like everything had to be um, as as one unit you know mm -hmm. I didn't know mm -hmm. how to separate myself from Work that like and I felt like I lost my voice in a lot of things because I gave away my voice as a younger, younger person. And, and it wasn't even my husband saying not to have that voice. I just thought that that's and what you should do. That's what I should do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I would never, ever, in fact, it, the, um, I didn't even realize I had, uh, just mentally stop, um, doing things or allowing myself even to like, where, where you would think dress sexy or something like that. I just felt like those are the things that I, I wouldn't wear a red, red dress. And it wasn't like I was told not to wear a red dress. Uh -huh. <laughs> but those are the things that I felt like will draw attention. And I didn't want that kind of attention in my marriage. So I gave away a lot of my voice. And I didn't even realize that until many years later that, that, that you're... You're you're giving away your personality, you know, mm -hmm. and you're you're doing things that you think is is supposed to be what a marriage is supposed to be, but you're you're giving away a lot of who you are, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and and to tell my and to have a to tell myself uh, tell myself right now, mm -hmm. or if I talk to young women, you know, I will definitely you know let you know don't ever give away who you are, or because that person should love you and respect you, and cherish honor you as who you 
who you are, you right. know, and don't and ever give away that voice. That was kind of a question I was going to go to mm -hmm. later, but you answered, and that's fine. Because mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self? Yeah. And that's what you would tell your yeah. younger self. Yeah. To keep I'm, your identity, you, you too. You keep your identity, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 um, and you can be a collective unit. Because I was always thinking that, like, you know, when they said, you know, a person makes you whole, mm -hmm. you know, you used, I used to hear that a lot, and you really need to be a whole person by yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and come together as a unit, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I, I That's was just saying. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's, and I think yeah. there were probably a lot of us may go through that whether mm -hmm. we want to admit it or not right, right. oh yeah oh, <laughs> but yeah. we do especially oh, yeah. in relationship mm -hmm. i know we were talking about the regrets that we have for our um for our younger selves but i know we had some moments that we're proud of for our younger self and of course our seasoned self so yeah. i know beverly you were talking so you were saying something about being able to stay at home as your younger uh, self yeah, so that's what you're proud of i'm proud of because a lot of women have families but they're not able to stay at home mm -hmm. and raise their kids a lot will want mm -hmm. to you know they have to go to school so it was good for me to be able to be at home mm -hmm. with my kids i walk my daughter to school go pick her up after school when they they always had a hot, hot meal i made everything from scratch mm -hmm. from wow. bread to jellies mm -hmm. to you know, they didn't eat store-bought stuff because I was home all day, so I made this stuff from scratch. Mm -hmm. My son, he doesn't know what that is. Because by the time my son came along, I had a job. Mm -hmm. So he knows noodles and TV dinners <laughs> and you know, whatever he could find, you know. So that's what I'm, I'm proud of as being a young mother. Mm -hmm. What about you, Carmen? You want to interject in that? Um, well, mine, I would say that, like, when I, I didn't know my father growing up, mm -hmm. and then when I did get a chance to meet him at 16, I didn't have a like for him because mm -hmm. it was like, why did you, you know, you have these questions running in your head, like, why did you... And those are all formative of things for womanhood. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, and so are... not having a relationship with him and not, well, you know, I after I got over my out of my feelings, I tried to have a relationship with him and then he you know he left again so I felt abandoned again mm -hmm. and so I didn't um I didn't want to have anything to kind of do with him and then actually when he passed away my uncle came reaching out to me about going to his funeral and I was like you know he didn't love me as a child I can care less about you know mm -hmm. when he was alive he didn't care I can care less mm -hmm. about him being you know dead and I have to go you mm -hmm. know pay my last respects but I was still young at the time too I was mm -hmm. early early 30 mm -hmm. and um but I wish I would have gone to see him because not seeing him and I knew that he was sick along the way mm -hmm. you know I kind of regret like just not seeing him you know mm -hmm. but I'm still kind of dealing with, with my that. own um pain of him not being there for me mm -hmm. you know as well so mm -hmm. I regret us not having a relationship, you know, because when he did reach out, I, you know, I, I was not receptive and then I was receptive and then he, you know, he fell off. But I wish that my mom, one of the things that I, that I have done differently from seeing my mom not encourage the relationship mm. between me and my father mm. Mm. when I had my son and we weren't together anymore when I divorced his father I made sure that his father still remained in his life right. his new wife you know he he was just as much as part as their family mm -hmm. as you know right. he was as if we were together mm -hmm. you know with his new family and mm -hmm. i i wanted i didn't want the same thing to mm -hmm. happen to me right. with losing myself with not mm -hmm. having my father then my son not being us not being with his dad mm -hmm him still having that relationship with his dad growing up and that's important i think two mm -hmm. girls i mean i know my parents divorced young with me, my, me and my father we had always had a you know still a really close relationship i had moved my dad out here uh, before he passed away mm -hmm. uh, but that is definitely i think i guess for anyone but we're talking about women for womanhood and things about not having your father mm -hmm. or like you said the challenge you went through mm -hmm. i could see well that would kind of something that you would struggle with mm -hmm. but what i will say is that's good because a lot of times we'll follow the circle of mm -hmm. follow the cycle mm -hmm. you, of what our parent did mm -hmm. so because your parent didn't foster try to foster a relationship between you and your dad you could have done the same thing mm -hmm. right but you chose to say no 
out of all your hurt that I'm going to still make sure. And I think that sometimes that we have to do that. Things that we didn't like, we just have to change it ourselves and not follow through. Did anybody else want to comment before we move on about our prouder moment for our younger self, or even now? Um, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll have a little input. Um, I was uh, also able to, um, at a young age, uh, uh, be a stay-at-home mom for a few years um, to my two boys, uh-huh. and uh, I was also one of those late career women of the 80s mm-hmm. and early 90s also. So I think that um, uh, being able to have the proper guidance for child care also mm-hmm. with my two boys mm-hmm. was an asset for me because I found the nurturing person to take care of them while I was in the you know workforce environment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm also very proud that um, I have a husband who has been there uh, to provide for his wife and his two sons. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are great attributes um, that acquired uh, for 32 years of marriage, oh, wow. still wow. 32 wow. years of marriage, and 34 <laughs> years of being together. That's good. That's real good. So, um, mm. yes, we've had some ups and downs, mm-hmm. but in terms yeah. of, of, you know, being proud as a wife and proud as a mother, I, I stand in that grace. And, mm. um, I, I, it, uh, yes, I could probably have done some things differently, but we're still together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I guess that that is, is what's first and foremost, mm-hmm. um, the continuing nurturing part of us being together. And we're also business owners together. We okay. work together every mm-hmm. day. Since 1993, we've wow. owned an appraisal business, wow. real estate appraisal. Mm-hmm. So as you can imagine, that could be a little bit challenging mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. still questioning why I do what I do, yeah. <laughs> right? right? But it's still a proud moment because we're still together. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. So Very mm-hmm. proud moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and I kind of want to circle to this because I think about, you know, as we become older, 21, we are, I'm a woman, I'm a woman, and, it's, and you have to think, I know, I think, well, what really made me, other than age, become a woman? You know, internally, you know, not just because I'm 21 or because I'm 25 or because I had a daughter. Really the essence of womanhood. Mm. And I think for me, one part of the essence that I knew that I was a woman or becoming a woman, of course, becoming a mother at a young age. And I will even say this. I think. When I did, because I'm married, I'm, this is my second marriage that I'm mm-hmm. in. I'm currently married. I was married before. Mm-hmm. I think even being divorced helped me become a woman. Helped me really step into because uh, if anybody knows it's here, they know divorce is tough. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whether you want to still be in it or not, it's mm-hmm. still tough. Whether you do want to get out of it or not, it's tough. It's mm-hmm. really like people say, it's almost like a death. Mm-hmm. It is. Getting mm-hmm. divorced. It, it, it's a lot because. You're emotional because sometimes you feel like, okay, this is a failure. Mm -hmm. I failed at something, Mm -hmm. so I'm getting divorced. So I feel, I I went through that feeling like I was a failure. Mm -hmm. And then you feel sad for your kids Mm -hmm. because they don't want it. Mm -hmm. So, but I think for me, leaving out of that is when I really, I pulled, you pull everything you have in you. Mm-hmm. To become the best you can be because you can't fall down. I mean, exactly. sometimes you want to, mm-hmm. sometimes you just want to fall out mm-hmm. and just say, Forget it, I mm-hmm. give up. But you can't mm-hmm. because you have kids, because you have yourself, and you just don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I think which may sound kind of odd is that a big part of me understand that I am a woman, strong, you're proud, is when I got divorced. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because I had yeah. to pull everything mm-hmm. out of me to still stand tall, stand proud. Mm-hmm. Some people look at you funny. Yeah. Family members, you mm-hmm. know, family yes. members maybe who did not want you to get divorced mm-hmm. and things like that. You still had to stand tall and proud. Yeah. Um, and I think that mm-hmm. really helped me walk into um, being a woman. You know, mm-hmm. really into my womanhood. It's just going through that and understanding that everything's still going to be okay and mm-hmm. I can move forward. Of course, now I'm married again yeah. um, and things like that and have my own business. So I think for me, 
getting divorced and understanding how to maneuver through that really helped me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly uh, to become a woman okay. i mean really that i knew yeah. that i am yeah. woman hear me mm -hmm. roar yeah. like right. that so, right. <laughs> uh -huh. that, going yeah. through a divorce because i was married almost 20 years oh wow mm -hmm. yeah so being married for the second time it's helping me but better to be a better wife mm -hmm. be more understanding mm -hmm. i had to learn to be submissive because you know i have my own job my own car my own house you know, I don't need no man. You like mm -hmm. I N D E. Yes. <laughs> but being married so. now, you know, I'm learning to be more submissive, mm -hmm. more understanding. We have an excellent relationship. So, yeah. mm -hmm. and I know that. Mm -hmm. I think um, sometimes as women, and I'm kind of going back to that. I know I wanted to do everything. Oh, yeah. I, I paid the bill. You know, I made sure all yeah. the bills were paid. Or mm -hmm. not saying that I I, I I used all of my money, but my point is, is that. I did money. If we were going somewhere, I planned that. Yeah. I planned this. I planned that. Mm. I planned this. I planned that. I have really submitted to, I don't have to do everything. Mm. Yeah. And then what you have to be careful of, I know we kind of go on to a little bit of another topic, but sometimes when you do everything, that's the expectation. Yep. You yeah. know, of every little thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, and you may know I that. I do. <laughs> you may know that, that every little thing not to say it's bad or good and i'm sure carl it's just sometimes you like if it could be something as i don't know small as fixing your man's plate all the time if you well if you always fix your man's plate and i'm not saying you don't supposed to or you don't have to i'm just trying to make a point yeah. to say yeah. that if i always fix my man's plate for 10 years and then after the 11th year i say i don't feel like it anymore you may look at me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not to say, you know what I'm saying, for all that time. So I just think sometimes, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm not doing saying any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying sometimes as a woman, we have to be careful of what we do because what we, what that, what expectation we put out. Mm -hmm. Because well, the expectation may go on forever. You mm -hmm. may not right. want that. You may just be like, oh, it's fun dating now or fun first right. being married. I want to do this. But after... Five or ten years, I mean, I want to do all that. Well, mm -hmm. I think part of me is that, I, you know, I want some participation. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't mind doing it, but I'd like some participation. Mm -hmm. You know, where's your input? Right. You know, mm -hmm. what, what, you know, so <clears throat> that I think it's a, a, a huge component when there could be an expectation there, but then what are your contributions, right? What are we having tonight? What's your input? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's yes, right. me. You know? I, mean, I love right. the input. Yeah, I may yeah. want to do it, but I, like I can't input. think of what I'm going to cook. I mm -hmm. can't go buy it. I can't. Yeah, right. I need some input to help yeah. me. Even if you say, I may want meatloaf, I wasn't even thinking that. Great. Okay, now, yeah. Now, exactly. now right. you don't get meatloaf. Right. 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 I don't have to think of it too. Exactly. So I know what you're saying yes. as, far as, as far as that. Input and participation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm always preparing that meatloaf the same way and you have a great idea and you've looked online, which is what he does, hey, mm -hmm. come back. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I'm yeah. saying? So then, right. then, then, then you've got a, um, a cooperative kind mm -hmm. of you know, thing going on. Right. Is anybody go? Yeah. Well, I mean, I wanted to kind of um, answer your question about um, what made you feel like a woman. That's what I was, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You said that yours was, you know, after you got divorced. Well, mine for me was when I got married. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I got married, you know, late. And I bought a house. And mm -hmm. I had bought a car. Cars. And I had a career. And mm -hmm. I had all of this stuff. But my, my values and focus in marriage was... To be submissive, to you know, fall under his leadership, and you know, mm -hmm. at your at your thirty pluses, you know, thirty five pluses, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want, you know, you, you know, your 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 will is not easily bent, uh -huh. you know, when it's time to submit to correct to daddy, you know, for mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, sex, you know, yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's like it's on it's on autopilot, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, you know, and I thought that that was going to be a hard pill for me to swallow when, you know, I got to tell him, okay, I'm going to spend this for this and this for this when, you know, it was all on me. Mm. And so I think that, you know, I'm proud of myself because, you know, I mean, even though that first year was like, you know, a flight going through the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> you know, you know, it's easier now. I mean, well, it's not even easy. It's, 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 on, it's, it's on autopilot again because now, you know, he didn't force me to you know, to, to submit to him, it had to be something I was willing to do. To do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so when he and, and and he, you know, and he stepped back and kind of let me, you know, ride that wave myself. 
And then, you know, and I felt like I, you know, I put my big girl draws on and said, mm -hmm. you know what, let me, you know, let me weigh this thing out. And it's mm -hmm. still an equal, you know, partnership. No, it's not 50-50, it's equal. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and we, you know, we, we look at marriage like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, coming in and, you know, with a blended family, you're thinking like, you know, here I am, add my, you know, add to this and how's this going to work out? Mm -hmm. You know, these kids going to give me, you know, are they going to respect me? You know, and, and I had all of those kind of, you know, you know, cringing moments, right? And, and it just all worked out when I submitted to God, and then when God's like, "Okay, I got you," mm -hmm. you know, and so I ended up, you know, having a great dismount, and now all is well. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's, that's good. Perfect. And I think that's, um, and I think that's important what you said, Carla, because you said He didn't make you. You submitted in your way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, at your time, I think. And like you said, at the 35 plus, when we said, when somebody says, in a sense, almost you better, mm -hmm. it's like, no, I'm not. Just because you, just, just because you said it. Right. So it has to be in a different way. And you, you, I, I totally agree with that. It kind of has to come from you. And then that's great that he let it. Yes. flow from you mm -hmm. instead of kind of pushing you to it and like you say God worked it all out yep. so right. now it's just kind of like the, like the smooth right. sail okay. and so um, one another one of the questions that I wanted to go to is um, I know we talked about relationships and, and things like that um, in our younger self even in dating and this is something good that I think is important to kind of share with younger women. Because I always like to, if someone runs across this taping on YouTube or wherever mm -hmm. they run, hopefully they can pull whatever piece mm -hmm. they need out of it. may not be everything, but something. So I always want to make sure we give something, you know, to our younger, younger women, uh, girls or whomever. Mm -hmm. So in a younger self, did... Dating, and I'm sure that it I probably can answer, I'm sure that it didn't, but in dating, because relationships are just something we have to deal with, it's, it's, it's always on the forefront. In dating, how is it different now? And we're going to get girlfriend right here because <laughs> she's like, she's thinking hard on that one. <laughs> but like in dating, your younger self dating versus maybe your seasoned self. But even if you're married now, you can kind of put a perspective on it. But even in your, your younger self dating, because I'm sure when we were younger, oh, yeah, he got to have or I want exactly. and all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We have a list. Not to say that we don't have a list now. I still think we should have some kind of things that we want. So that, and this is just me, so we don't fall for anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I just want to know, kind of how has the shift in dating and your perspective on dating mm -hmm. changed? Well, I know for me, uh, my younger self, uh, it was it was pretty much uh, a physical attraction. You know, you saw someone, you met someone, and, um, and it was all just everything on the surface, you know. So as I get, now I'm in my 50s and out here dating, it, it is just a whole lot more deeper, you know, because, um, you know, you want a spiritual mindset, you want, um, you want, you just want a like-minded soul, you know, it, it becomes less about, uh, I mean, of course, physical attraction, you have to have that, but it becomes less of that and more of so many other, other things that are more important, mm -hmm. how they treat you, how they, mm -hmm. you know, um, how they speak to you, how, you know, and you want someone that's uh, financially stable. I mean, you you want for me. I I, I want a Christian-minded, spiritual person. They don't have to go to church every day, but they have to be spiritually conscious. You know, so it becomes a whole lot more deeper now than when I was in my twenties, because twenties mm -hmm. I was just looking to have fun, and, and it was it was I wasn't looking for any type of a commitment. You know, now is you know I don't even waste my time with. Um, with when I'm I'm very straightforward when I when I even meet people you know mm -hmm. because um, I don't even like to waste a lot of time over over <laughs> just bull crap you know mm -hmm. you know <laughs> when you meet people That's you know true. you just you kind of tell yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we can mm -hmm. go around mm -hmm. kind of go around with that and we'll well you know I can't really I can relate to it in a, a little bit because I was when I was in my twenties I was married mm -hmm. so. As soon as I graduated from out of high school, I went right to Motorola. Then uh, 
my I was still with my parents at that time and my dad was for working for Saw River and he used to have the guys always to come over on the weekend and I met my first husband through him working for Saw River Project mm -hmm. and I ended up getting married to him mm -hmm. and we moved and had our own home so I really can't say being in my 20s I was out here dating doing this doing that but you know I had friends and stuff and then I said you know what I prefer to be married than being single because mm -hmm. you know what it's too much it's too much mm -hmm. so I end up, you know, married the first time, nine years, and I then filed for a divorce on that, and that's history, that's gone, and now I'm on my second marriage, and I've been married 17 years, mm -hmm. and I really love it, you know, mm -hmm. because if somebody like to do what I like to do, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. I mean, he told me when I was coming here, which I thought was so cute, oh, are you ready, because we we're getting ready to go to the real women, I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure, <laughs> come on, right. he said, I said, babe, you know I ain't going to nothing like that, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, but it's, with him, is 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 different. It is so different from looking at when I was married before until now. Mm. Oh, it's so different. It mm. is, you know, it's it's totally different. Totally. What's different. one of the differences? Is because it's so, for one is I have someone like to do what I like to do. I like to do the things he like to do. You know what I'm saying? And for one, he cook and I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling that. You know, mm. he loves to cook. Mm. You know, but you know, recently here it, that that changed. That you know, because the way he have he and been sick and everything, so we have to change now. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he whatever he's been through me thick through thin, and I've been through a lot come health wise. He's been there, and the same with me with him. You know. That's just like, that's my cellmate. Whatever I do, he going to do. Uh, if you see him, you see me. or You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's so different than my first one. I think my first one is because I was moving so fast in it and so much was going on at that time. I couldn't really say, oh, I enjoyed it or nothing like that. Because it was too fast and too much was going on. And it was just not... It wasn't too much of a happy moment in none of it because of the lifestyle of him and, and I'm trying to make it right here. He wanted to do what he wanted to do and it was just it just wasn't right. But now I can say I'm I'm happy, you know, I'm happy. I uh, you know look at things. I, I was gonna ask now, I know you've been married for thirty two years but and I've I've run across a lot of people on their second marriages and it mm -hmm. seems like a lot of people here on their second marriages now. What is the differences between like then and now for, for that's her. that's that's where we're going. Yeah, yeah. what's the difference? And that's yeah. what I was going to answer. As far I as think the for second, me, the difference, yeah. the difference, the difference is is that, and we were saying younger self is that you look for different things. I think my assumption mm. on what I thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. was a wife supposed mm -hmm. to be your girl you know whatever it was an assumption you know things you may see on tv even things that you grow up in your household because i will i i, I still believe this um uh, that our parents are our first templates or whoever mm -hmm. raised us is mm -hmm. our first template like i feel that i'm my daughter's first template mm -hmm. because if she looks for womanhood who is she going to look at first? Exactly. She's going to look right. at me. Right. Mm -hmm. So I have to be that example mm -hmm. that she can portray on to her kids. So I think the assumption was uh, that things that I was supposed to do or things that I wasn't supposed to do, you know, mm -hmm. of seeing, my, seeing what my mother did or mm -hmm. my grandmother or aunts or whatever. But I think when I was younger, certain things I looked for, like you say, of course, you still look for physical attraction or whatever yeah. that physical mm -hmm. attraction may be mm -hmm. for that each individual. I think I wasn't, I was just kind of, whoever said it, just out there, kind of exactly. just like, just kind of out there like, oh, okay, you seem to be good, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, mm -hmm. just because two people are great people mm -hmm. or decent people mm -hmm. that doesn't mean good it you. works you know <laughs> exactly. what i'm saying it's, and that's exactly. just when because we mm -hmm. talked about blended families a little bit carla touched on that and i've been a blended family i've been a you know blended family but really more involved in blended family in my second marriage and you have to realize and my husband is a great man but just because he's a great man and I'm a great woman, that don't mean we agree on how we think we should do things. You know what I'm saying? So those are things that you overlook. You're like, oh, he's a good person. She's a good person. They're a spiritual person. He's this. He does that. But that doesn't mean we're going to agree on, on something as minute as what curfew should be. Because that's not what we talked about. Right. And, that was, and I will say exactly. to anybody that that was probably 
some of the downfalls that we probably could have had a little bit of smooth sailing mm-hmm. had we just and talked about that and mm-hmm. forgotten how much yeah. of a great mm-hmm. person that we mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. each other was and mm-hmm. that we thought we were educated mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. We forgot about mm-hmm. the little things because how we get to the finish line doesn't mean that's how yeah. you get to the finish mm-hmm. line. I get to the finish line like this yeah. or you get mm-hmm. to, you know, we both want great things for our kids, but we just do it different ways mm-hmm. and that's really important. So yeah. I think now I'm married, but still I got married later, I, I, you know, after I was, what, 40, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I think then I started looking for more of a real partnership, mm-hmm. you know, a really partnership, mm-hmm. not just, oh, we're going to get married and we're going to make this work or whatever, a, a real partnership and stability. Exactly. I mean, exactly. let's just face it, at 50, mm-hmm. I'm not going to knock anybody and I'm going to be very real because it's real, <laughs> real, right? I'm just going to be real. And I'm not, this is just Audrey. I do look for stability. I don't want to look for someone that I need to take care of. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's just being real. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that I'm not saying that my younger self, because you're striving, you're working together, you're trying to build. But it is nice to have a man that's stable financially that allows me to be able to do this. To do what you got to do. No, that's just real talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, In my first marriage, I would not have been able to do this. Exactly. So I'm allowed, in a sense, to be able to do this, to be a bit freer. Mm -hmm. And not still have to worry about the mortgage, the lights, or whatever else is going on. Mm -hmm. Because I have a man who's going to hold it down. Mm -hmm. Period. And see, my marriage, I just got married in my 50s. But this time, first time was about love and all that mm. stuff. This time, it was about me. Mm. I had an application. <laughs> and if everything didn't match on that application, mm-hmm. he wasn't for me. Mm. My husband, I dated him online for almost a year before we even met. Wow. So I had everything. He had all the right answers. He didn't even know I was, I was interviewing him mm. until we got together. But everything had to be right this time because I said, this is it. We're going to be married forever. Mm -hmm. And it was about me, what I wanted. And when I found the man that was about what I wanted, then I knew he was the one. Mm -hmm. And we are so perfect. And we don't have any kids. So we can travel when we want to do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm able to retire now because I got a husband mm-hmm. that can take care of me and I can do my business and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot different than mm-hmm. my first marriage. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh-huh. Carlos? Um, sounds like what we are all experiencing is when we are a child, we act like a child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We think like a child. Mm-hmm. And in the Bible it says when you act when you're a child, you act like a child. Exactly. When you're an adult, you act mm-hmm. like an adult mm-hmm. and think exactly. like an adult. Mm-hmm. So it, it's about experience. Mm-hmm. You know, what we try to teach our young adult children, mm-hmm. you know, don't do this things, don't do mm-hmm. that thing. But it is about them having their own experience. Mm-hmm. So when we were younger and we were dating, it was all about the fast life. It mm-hmm. was like how quick can, you know, how quick, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like now. It's the cell phone. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the social media. Mm-hmm. Those are all quick, the things that the, the, it's the immediate mm-hmm. satisfaction. Mm-hmm. It's it's no value in mm-hmm. the long term. Exactly. They don't understand that. Right. Mm-hmm. So we kind of, as we matured into making good decisions, making healthy decisions, making bad decisions, mm-hmm. having to you know fall on our behinds and then. Mm-hmm pick ourselves back up and be encouraged to move past that this too shall pass situation mm-hmm. that's exactly. where we that's where we grow mm-hmm. and without the challenge we don't grow mm-hmm. and where we are now I'm in my second marriage I raised my son from time he was one Mm -hmm. till he was 21 before Mm -hmm. I got married Mm -hmm. so when I was by myself I was a single parent I was I was hustling I was making sure the food the the the, um, bills were paid I had a new car so I can get to work Mm -hmm. I had you know I had my house Mm -hmm. you know I gave myself a $25 budget to spend every week (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know so I had Mm -hmm. to grow into the woman that I am so when I was dating 
I was setting the expectations of what I wanted when I exactly. wanted. You know, this was yeah. my house. You can come stay with me. <laughs> exactly. You know, with my mm-hmm. son here on the weekend. But right. I had to learn those things. Mm-hmm. Like, what was truly important to me. And it was probably, like, when I got married the first time, it was all, like, the physical. My hus- my ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fine. Just mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> but totally messed up in the head. Mm-hmm. Right. Totally, right. you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, I could change. Mm-hmm. That's what we mm-hmm. I could That's love what we him enough mm-hmm. that he will he'll change. He'll I change. Can, you know, mm-hmm. I could fix that. That's not my problem. Mm-hmm. Now today when my husband says you don't want me to do that. Hey, that's your problem. You, yeah. you yeah. get on your knees and you pray about that because that's not. I'm not right. Right. And it's right. easy for me to say with right. love versus right. exactly. saying out of anger. Exactly. Whereas yeah. before yeah. we yeah. would fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might exactly. say no. Mm-hmm. We would be like it'd yeah. be a fight. Mm-hmm. You know, but now I know how to let him down easy exactly. and still kind of get what I want. Exactly. exactly. Right. You know, right. to get what I want. Right. You know, right. Right. massage him. You know, yeah. where he doesn't feel like I'm. I'm leaving him right. to go out and have all this fun mm-hmm. yeah. and then you know what about what about me um, what about me mm-hmm. it's always you know it's true mm-hmm. it's true mm-hmm. with them it's always what about me what am I supposed to eat what am I supposed to do mm-hmm. go I swim it, you know it's like <laughs> have a drink <laughs> you know? right. 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 right you know right. Right. but that's because we set the you yes. know we we've given them so much um, we we we've, we've catered to them mm-hmm. in a, in a special I, way mm-hmm. that they don't want to feel threatened when we leave them. Mm-hmm. You know, and now I I can say the same thing like Audrey. And I'm in a much better place now because I am I am in a better. You know, mm-hmm. I was a better woman, a totally different woman than when I met my husband. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. and. I was the twinkle in his eye, and he was he was the twinkle in my eye, and mm-hmm. we've been that way every since. Mm-hmm. And I had to learn through um, dating because my dating was about how I was going to act in certain situations, mm-hmm. knowing that this wasn't going to be the man for me. But mm-hmm. I needed to date uh-huh. for that experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when I got yeah. with him, I had already under you know knew the right words to say. Mm-hmm. Be like, hey, I'm going out. You know, I'm going out with my girls. We going to a play, or we going to do this, and it's all with the girls. Mm-hmm. You know, so when he come with well, what am I? You know, well, what about whoa me kind of thing? Mm-hmm. I I had enough responses in the in the past with dating that I knew how to deal with him because all men think alike. Yeah. 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 They truly have you know yeah. that some of them just say it in a different way. And they say it in a different way, way. Yeah. Exactly. 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 way to yes. mm-hmm. but they do. Mm-hmm. But they do. Exactly. And um and he respect that because mm-hmm. I, I he he you know if we stand on our own independence mm-hmm. we'll see that they respect that and they love that they yeah. that and that mm-hmm. they adore that about mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. you know if you kind of make yourself meek and timid mm-hmm. and you know the the being submissive it's 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 a choice mm-hmm. you know it's a true mm-hmm. choice a on choice. on being mm-hmm. submissive exactly. mm-hmm. you know and some things it's the battle between not mm-hmm. about who's right and wrong mm-hmm. but okay. i like it or i don't right. you that's know right. and yeah. we that's still right. got to Right. Work our way through that, you mm-hmm. know, right. because we're not gonna agree on everything. Every that's right. Right. That's right. Friends, we not right. 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 in relationship, mm-hmm. and nothing we're not. And yeah. it's not that. And I think sometimes um, I had a friend, and I was kind of doing some letters. I was trying to make like a, my chat on Facebook where I get some of the things, and then that we can kind of discuss it, like the letter, a mm-hmm. real a RWR letter. Mm-hmm. And I think that was her thing that. She didn't know. It was like every time, and I can say this because they're going to live here, but they're sure they'll see it. But mm. and I didn't say any day. But <laughs> it was like every time it was something, like you say, a play, I'm going with the girl. Mm-hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, something is wrong with them. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Oh, mm-hmm. well, I needed to get something for the car, or I don't know. And I needed you to, you know, it was mm-hmm. always, so it was like a challenge. That he wasn't necessarily saying don't go, mm-hmm. but it was something that made her not go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To say, okay, well. The roundabout way. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was like, well, how do I get over that? I mean, you know, what I do, he's not saying don't go because she'll say, well, I'm, you're not, you don't want me to go. Oh, I didn't say not to go. Oh. You know, so that's the first thing you say. I didn't say don't go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because of all these excuses come up, oh, the pool drain and I need yeah. you, you know, or whatever. There are a few obstacles need, in the way. <laughs> always an obstacle. Right, right. Right. Always an obstacle. Right. So it was just like, how do how you know, mm-hmm. that was just one thing, but. 
like you were saying, Carmen, some things that we just not even agree on. Yeah. You know, if exactly. the pool drained or whatever, then we'll just call somebody when I get back. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm going I'll, to the club. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not broke. that priority. It's going to yeah. still be broke right. when priority. I get back. Right. 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 You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I think, I think mm-hmm. that is. And I think you do learn because I know I have because... I've always was born with, I always blame my mother. She's like, it's your fault that I'm always ready to snap off, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> because that's how she, you know, mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. learn that. And then mm-hmm. that can be a learned behavior for yeah. me that I have to try to change within myself. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I thought, because for me, vulnerability was very hard for me. Mm-hmm. I just be real true. Mm-hmm. Being vulnerable and just let every just let it all out and just let Cry you know everything. and just that's tough, give yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. That's that was mm-hmm. not me. Yeah. Uh, you're not getting ready to make me vulnerable. Break with me. me. Yeah. Break me. When I, you wouldn't yeah. break me. See, that was that was That's me. a tough as, so, as you get older, that's and as even, you get older you have to learn. Tough. And that's mm-hmm. and that was not a necessarily a good thing yeah. to kinda just always, you know, ready to keep your guard up because I'm not ready for you yeah. to hurt me or break yeah. me. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep my guard up and not mm-hmm. be so vulnerable. But I know I would kind of like, as soon as you say no to me, no, what you mean no? Yeah. You know, it was like, okay, you're trying to control me. You know, I just mm-hmm. had this thing about being me, controlled. I'm just, yeah. being, and vulnerability, that's that's tough. Because, that's deep. Because um, I felt like when I was in my marriage, I was so vulnerable. I, I love with every fiber, every everything in my body you know and I felt like I left myself open for that kind of love you know and now that I'm in my fifth I don't want to be jaded and and when I'm dating but to be that I, w- I would love to be vulnerable again where yes. I feel like I can love freely you, could just let you know it go. and yeah. let it go but how do you do that <laughs> you know and that's growing and that's what I think yeah. is growing to womanhood I yeah. had to learn how yeah. to say not everybody's gonna do that, or yeah. mm-hmm. because yeah. I'm being vulnerable is not taking anything away from me. Yeah. When I'm trying to be open and honest and loving, and you use my vulnerability yes. in a negative way, yeah. so I just had to learn that and move past yeah. that. But that was a very that was very hard yeah. for me as a younger woman trying to just be vulnerable and let it all out. I just very be very open that I just didn't believe in giving myself even sexually. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe in giving everything away. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I just was just like, because what if I do? Then what? Mm-hmm. You know, I, mm-hmm. I guess maybe I was looking at it in a negative mm-hmm. uh, sense, which I probably shouldn't have been doing that. But that's mm-hmm. just as a, as a younger girl. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I had my daughter. And then after that didn't work out, I was just like... I was not the woman that any guy would want. <laughs> I mean, you would want to meet me, but there was no game, no nothing. I dated, I dated, I dated. I dated a lot of guys. Not to say I was having any type of sexual, but I just dated. I was like, I'm done. It's like, you hurt me once, never again. You know, I, I just built that yeah. up in me until I had to be woman enough to say, you got to let that go, Arthur. You just can't be that cold and, you know, and just let it go. And I think that's all growing. I, I, we have to let... Some of our past hurts mm-hmm. probably is what probably probably molds us the most yeah. into mm-hmm. being a woman. Mm-hmm. Some of those hurts and learning how to turn it into a positive yeah. and become a stronger and better woman for you know us or whoever we meet, our kids or whatever. Right, right. So. kind of like the learned behavior has mm-hmm. to be unlearned. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. we it have does. to experience yeah. it mm-hmm. in a different mm-hmm. in a different light. You mm-hmm. know how is how am I going to apply? the unlearned behavior favorable Mm -hmm, so as Carmen would say because I'm going to get what I want Mm -hmm, (laughs) right mm -hmm. and so it's 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 an attribute that doesn't come easy Mm -hmm. but when it does you know that you can't go back to that same kind of behavior again Mm -hmm. because it uh, it takes a toll on you. Mm. It takes a toll on you personally, mm-hmm. um, and you find you can find yourself by yourself. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. you're, mm-hmm. you you sabotage your relationships with mm-hmm. your friends and your family, and you know it it just becomes you. Your mm-hmm. world is that small now, mm-hmm. and you don't want to live like that. That's no. right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why mm-hmm. we should probably have. A really supportive sisterhood network mm-hmm. somewhere that's non-judgmental. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You can trust it because we don't have the answers for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes mm-hmm. I, I may be furious or 
upset or whatever, and then I could bring it to you guys. You'd be like, well, no, you know. And I, I'm not, I'm not that person that please don't agree with everything I say. Mm-hmm. I don't need friends like that. Mm-hmm. You know, to agree mm-hmm. with everything. But sometimes we just need that because we have to have another set of eyes when we have a mature mm-hmm. right. group to say, hey, Carmen or whatever, I think this happened or whatever, or you know, just just another exactly. perspective sometimes mm-hmm. because we don't always have the answer right off and sometimes quick to you know say something or think something is not important so i think it's really i think that's that's a real good part of womanhood Mm -hmm. is having a great supportive system you know having a great supportive trust non-judgmental because we know we all make mistakes trustworthy and Mm non-judgmental will you allow a different perspective to be in your psyche right you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. We have to because we don't, you and know, we just have all yeah. different, oh, yes. different challenges. Mm-hmm. So I think that's really important. I know for me, and I'm sure some of you guys do it too or have, but for me, after becoming a woman, I've kind of more so journaled some things to say, okay, this happened, this is what I did, and then come back three or four years or five years what I would have handled that situation or look at it in a different perspective so sometimes I think for me I've always been a writer even as a kid my mother used to tell me oh I found some paper that I wrote or my feelings because the vulnerability thing Mm -hmm. I may write it and tuck it away Mm -hmm. I may not want anybody else to see Mm -hmm. it but it was for me that's how I got it out Mm -hmm. you know but I think I think journaling is really good. Mm-hmm. It can be helpful because mm-hmm. sometimes it gives a perspective when you want to come back. Mm-hmm. So if I was going through something right now, I would journal it, and then mm-hmm. maybe five years come back to say what I would have handled it the same way. Did I do, or how have I grown mm-hmm. from that situation mm-hmm. from then? So it's kind of good just to kind of keep a perspective of what kind of has taken place. I agree. Uh, mm-hmm. If anybody has anybody ever turned to you, I would think you would, Carla. I used to. Did you? I, I write. Oh, you used okay? To. Yeah, I just some type of form of I do. Yeah. I I journaled. Yeah. Um, I started journaling like my relationship with my husband before we got married, and I still I would now I I, I would even go now and look back on certain situations mm-hmm. and how I felt at the time. I mean, I have letters like this thick where I've just written down like especially if I was something was going on if we had an argument I'll just write down uh, how I felt because sometimes you know you can one one thing I learned um, going be, be, prior to getting married I, I've always been very close to my family my mother's past but I was close to my my mother but I used to talk to my mother about everything mm-hmm. and so in that talking to your parent you know she used to get all up in the business you know <laughs> so so I, you know so I, th- that's one thing I would definitely as my younger yeah, say, self, self mm-hmm. say, keep your family members out your business, yeah, you know, exactly. yeah, you know, you know, but, and that's why I started journaling a lot because I just wanted to have <coughs> our own perspectives without having a lot of outside into the marriage and deal with it on a one-on-one instead of having the opinions of, of your mother or close friend. Cause a lot of times, well, most times when you're telling your story you're telling your story <laughs> you know you're not even telling what what that what what you yeah. said or what you did so they're only going to react to your feelings your feelings you know so yeah definitely as my younger self i would say keep your your if you're in a marriage keep your marriage to yourself you know? and you know? then that's why you have to find that's why i said because Sometimes you still need to talk to somebody who may have more experience right. and more exactly. knowledge. Yeah. So you got to have somebody. Yeah, I you mean, have people that I you talk to. I think what happens yeah. sometimes is that when we tell family members, exactly. they get mad. They, yeah. get, they love us. So if, if yeah. I don't tell my mother, oh, my husband did this, yeah. or didn't come home one night or whatever, then they're mad at they him. They mad at him, yeah. And we've talked it out and worked it out. Worked it out. Still yeah. Mad. Yeah. yeah, and they still yeah. mad. So yeah. that's, that's yeah. the part. Yes, yeah. yes. Still holding yes. on because we love them in that way. They That's right. That's right. You know. <laughs> That's so right. Yeah, we yeah. have to still. Yeah, you have to always somebody. have someone that you talk to. I'm just saying, like, like what I was talking about. Your, if you have a parent or, yeah. or your family members, you know, you got to have someone because you can't just hold everything inside. You got to have somewhere, mm-hmm. someone where you can vent to. You exactly. Know? So I think I'll go around and ask if it was a younger person because we always want to make sure that we're giving back some type of advocacy. 
what would you just and it doesn't it could be a relationship it could be career it could be whatever it could be what would you we'll just go this way what would you um say to a younger woman maybe 18 21 you know just getting into her own in a sense quote unquote womanhood what would be some advice that you would just want her to kind of hold on to i would say um don't expose your body in sexual sexually in social media mm-hmm. okay that's good because that's the world we're in yeah mm-hmm. carmen um I would say really focus on being kind to others because how you treat other people is like your universe. What you put out there, that energy that you put out, it will come back to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, walk proud, walk um, encouraged, um, stand tall, have your own identity, and uh, really be cognizant on how you treat other people. Mm -hmm. I say be yourself. Don't be nobody else but yourself. And when you do things, do it yourself to just you. You know what I'm saying? And res- and have respect for yourself as a young lady. Because today, a lot of them don't have no respect at all. You know? And I have one, a friend of mine's daughter just got married. And she's just 20 something. 20, I want to say 22, 23. And, uh, I give her her props for that, you know what I'm saying? But like I told her, and I, I'm going to tell all the rest of them out there, is you have to have respect for yourself, too, starting off, and in order for people to have respect for you. But keep it as a, a young lady at all times, and you'll get that respect. And just be respectful. That's all. Just have some respect for yourself, you know, because I can go on and on with it. Because I be I have been around all the ages. I have worked with all the ages of young girls, and I'm telling you, in the way it is today, whew, oh my mm-hmm. God, a whole different. I just like, oh Lord, mm-hmm. it's a different breed now. <laughs> yeah, this breed right here is nothing nice. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing nice, no respect, no nothing. You can have very few out there. It's been trained and been. It started home. You can tell those. Mm-hmm. It's very few of them. It ain't that many of them, but it's very few of them. You know, just just be respectful and just be a lady. That's all I can say. Just be a lady. I would say be mindful of how you carry yourself out there in public. You don't have to um, show everything you've got to get attention. You can be fully closed and get that same attention. So I would say just be mindful of how you dress and how you carry yourself when you're out there in public. Okay. Well, I would simply say uh, to younger women, uh, live your life, um, uh, travel, explore the world um, before you enter into relationships, get to know who you are, um, fully know who you are, you know, and and just experiment with life, you know, before you, you know, before you get involved in relationships. Um, have your own mind. Make your own decisions. Don't be a follower all the time. Sometimes you do have to follow the lead when people are trying to give you wisdom. But don't be a follower because, you know, wherever you follow someone, you're going. So that means that you may not want to go there once you're there. So, you know, one thing as a woman of vision that I learned is that, you know, there were a lot of things my parents wanted me to be, but I didn't want to be. So, you know. I would just encourage young women to have a vision about where they want to be and pursue it. You can't be everything. You got to pursue what you want to be and don't deter from that because people will try. Mm-hmm. Good deal. Mayor? Well, what I would say is we can't We can't hear you over here. <laughs> what I would say <laughs> is uh, get your education. Education and in nowadays, before back in the day, you have experience, you can move up. Nowadays, they want a uh, bachelor's, a master's. They want that piece of paper to show that you are able to enter into school and finish. And regardless if you have children, regardless if you're in a relationship, you do not let that set you back. Nowadays, these young women, especially if you have a support team, 
like a mom like me that's there to support you. You don't have to pay for anything. And go to school, take advantage of that. Absolutely. So that's my only regret is when I was involved in going to college, had someone there to pay for it, my thought process was, you're trying to run my life. You're yeah. trying to tell me what to do. And there was a lot of other things involved in that. But I wish I would have just said, you know what, let me suck it up for four years and finish. <laughs> yeah. right. Someone else is paying for it. Yeah. Yeah. So now it's the point of, yeah, going back over 50 and still going to school. You could do that. But I don't want that with young women. I don't want it with my, my daughter. So I tell her, get your education. Go and finish as much as you can. Find out what you like, what you don't like. You know, um, you know, help out in your community. You know, just just be a part of your community. Learn about yourself. It's very important to find supportive groups, supportive people to be around because we don't know everything. Just like we say when we're younger. I know one thing when my daughter told me as she got older. Now that she's thirty, um, they play sports, and I kept saying, "You know, I say, oh, you gotta save for your college fund." I told my kids, "We not save for college fund." all this money. I know that sounds like, I know people are like, what are you saying? But I made them. You're going to get an academic scholarship and you're going to get an a, 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 a athletic scholarship. And that's how they went to college. They both did. I'm not saying my way is the right way. That's just what I wanted them to do. Strive for something hard. And I didn't let them quit. They wanted to quit. They walked out of practice. And co no, you're not going to quit because you know what? I wish I had somebody sometime in my life that pushed me and made me do it so that I could be thankful later. And so I really do say, yeah, before you get so involved in relationships and marriage and kids and sometimes, even though that was me, I would find yourself because you wind up and sometimes have regrets that you don't want to, what we were talking about. So really just... Look deep into yourself, as Carl. Have your own mind. Mm -hmm. Know what you like, and you know, just just be you. Be you. Have fun with life. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a Good lot life. of times mm -hmm. to because, like I say, you can go on all these trips or whatever. But when you have your own great job or whatever, and can sponsor your own self to do these things as mm -hmm. a young girl, or mm -hmm. you can take your girl. This is what I miss. I miss being. 19 and jet setting with my mm -hmm. girlfriends and saying I, how I saw my daughter do oh we're going here now we're going mm -hmm. here now and I don't have to find a babysitter mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so just really live your life mm -hmm. you know live your life because mm -hmm. you got time trust me you even find a mate you know sometimes we settle sometimes because we have low self esteem about what we probably should have done mm -hmm. but you don't have to settle that mm -hmm. settle you know get out of settling for anything, relationships or whatever. <laughs> yes, I love it. So is it raining in yes. Tahiti? Yes. 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 It's raining in So I guess that was, that was, what rain is something that's very good on how we're going to end. Yeah. So I just thank you guys for sharing, being a little open, giving something back. And if you want to give any type of one-on-one -on -one testimony online, I mean on, on camera real quick, you can. But I just thank you guys for sharing. I think it's really helpful. I think it's therapeutic yeah, it just is. to kind of get mm -hmm. some things it out is. that we may have had inside mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that that's what what another part of having supportive group. It's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank you again, Carmen, for mm -hmm. opening up your phone.